everybody. Right, basically, as you know, where I live is Hayley Island. But, what you might not know is how much stuff is left over from the war. Like these. I'm going to go around basically this island and I'm going to find all the bits from the war that I can. Um, but these are one of the weirder ones. Huge concrete lumps with massive iron loops. I am yet to find out actually what these were originally for. Um, because look at the fucking size of them. These must weigh a good, I don't know, what, 20, 30 tonnes? Maybe more? I don't know. I don't need to work it out, concrete. Yeah. Big bastards. But there's some uh, quite a lot more interesting stuff I'm going to show you in a minute. So it's all this. I remember when I was a kid, actually, the sand used to be up here and there used to be a hollow underneath. That's really weird to see it like that. We used to always play around these, as you can imagine. It's kind of sort of, it's a bit weird, isn't it, the way that kids do tend to play around things that used to be used in war. It's like they've become benign. Oh, right. To the next one. Uh, let's take a shortcut. Right, this one is going to be... Well, when I grew up, uh, I used to actually live around here at one point. Uh, but I don't, haven't done for like 18 years. But I used to look at this thing every day. So I know all about... So it's, it's always been sort of in my memory quite strongly. Alright. Now. Uh, maybe I'll have to zoom for this. I see I keep my head still. Alright, can you see that thing over there? Yeah. That's called, well, we used to call, around here we call it the Mulberry Harbour. But it isn't the Mulberry Harbour. The Mulberry Harbour was a very ambitious plan, which was basically they made these things, that well, should actually be called a phoenix. And it's actually broken. It should be square on the top. And what they did was they made these concrete floating rafts and then they took them across to Normandy for D-Day and then they sunk them down to the seabed and it makes a natural harbour. Well, not natural, an artificial harbour. That's the whole point of it. Um, interestingly, this one that was being brought through here cracked and they realised they couldn't take it across. It was no point. So they dumped it there. And since then, it's broken apart even more, but it is not going anywhere. That thing weighs hundreds, probably, well, no, thousands of tonnes of concrete. It's going nowhere. There's stories, honestly, as a kid from around here, about the bodies that are in there. It's haunted by some old fisherman. <laughs> it's brilliant. That's one of the really weird ones, though. And people ask about that one a lot. And they're like, what is it? And you tell them, and they're like, oh, okay. And they don't really get it. Um, and it's weird living, sort of, with this much stuff around. Because most of it, in other places, has been removed. or wasn't there at all. Well, actually, here's another interesting one. And I promise you, this is true. In the war, one of my relatives was uh, commissioned, but you know, it was, it was helping out the army. And they'd asked him to dig a trench across this beach. I don't know how far it went for. And they put a pipeline in, which was sealed and had explosives in it. And it's because this was a very good landing area. And it was basically said that if the Germans ever did invade, that he had to blow up the beach. So I'm imagining there was a considerably large amount of explosives he wants to destroy that beach. Um, and it's still there, as far as we know. I mean, it's probably degraded now. It's probably not going to mean anything. One of my relatives who used to live there, well, she's not actually a relative, friend of the family. She's died now, but she was she lived here and looked after a member of my family as a nurse for, like, 40 years or something. Maybe even longer than that. Um, once someone was bait digging out there, and they actually came across this line, and she said to them, don't touch that. And he was like, oh, it's fine. You don't want to talk about it. It's just a pipeline. And she says, no, it's not. Don't touch it. <laughs> so... That's a bit mad, really, isn't it? Why is there a bike just parked down there? There's no ferry. Take your bike on the ferry. Anyway, um, there is lots more to see. Right, okay, we're a bit up the road from there. Um, a lot of this stuff is situated on one corner of the island. Um, there's some concrete works out there, which I'm not going to bother going to, because it's all overgrown. You can't really see what it is. But here is one of the pillboxes. Pretty obvious. It's a uh, concrete sort of hide. <laughs> hide? That's the wrong word. And it's got a door on the back, which somewhere in one of these sides you can't actually get in there. I'll probably show you another one. Um, but obviously these are for uh, 
if there was an invasion. Troops inside shooting out, see, got their uh, angles. But uh, these just get driven past every day and I don't anyone gives it a second thought. It's like what it was, what it was for. Which, you know, is a bit of a shame really because, uh, look, well, a lot of shit went on back then basically and it's, it's easily forgotten about. And it just goes to show how serious the British Army or the government or whatever thought that the invasion risk for England was because they went to the point of doing all of this in a very small place. I mean, and I know we're near to Portsmouth, so this does make us somewhat susceptible to uh, where the Germans would have wanted to invade. Um, okay, again, a little bit further up the road. This is where there were guns. Big ones, I believe. Uh, they may have been anti-aircraft. I can't actually remember which they were for. Maybe I'll find out and let you know in a minute. But it uh, doesn't look much here at the moment. See, not a lot to see. I'm going to walk over. Oh, gun emplacements. That's a swallow. Oh, one swallow a summer does not make. No, definitely fucking not. Look at the state of it. It's July and it's been pissing it down all the time. Um, what? Oh, you are having a laugh. Oh uh, yeah, they turn these into monuments now. And people have picnics and things in here, which is kind of... This is again, like I say, with kids like playing on stuff. I don't want to move the stuff. I don't want to touch it. But yeah, they used to have the gun in here. It was on a uh, revolving like turntable. It was like a pivot and some metal work in the ground, but they seem to have got rid of that. And I don't like that, because you can't see the engineering of it. That apparently is one of the ammo dumps. Yeah, they have. They used to be like these... Um, you could see the original sort of ironwork in the ground for where the gun placed was pivoted on, and then it had like... They put like a compass on it. I mean, obviously they didn't have a compass then. They knew which way they were fucking facing. It was like, north. Hold on, mate. Uh, oh, there it is. Boom! <laughs> Um, interestingly, which lump was it? This lump, there's something under that lump. Because someone was walking over it a while ago and put their foot straight through um, a hole that went about four foot deep. And they looked into it and they discovered that there is a building underneath this lump. But no one knew what it is. I think it must have been another one of these buildings, sort of a, I mean, officer's bit. So far, to, oh, I can't, um, right, okay, hang on. There we go, right, don't tell anyone about that, um, <clears throat> little teleportation skill I have. You know, that's what we get from A to B. Okay, again, another fucking great big lump of concrete. Uh, this one, I don't know, <laughs> I, I, no, the problem is no one knows, seems to know locally what these things are, I'm sure that we do know, but that is just a concrete building with a roof, probably just some sort of like, protection or barracks. Right, you can see now what I was saying about this grid work of um, concrete little paths and apparently there was buildings all in between that and that's another thing left over. Oh, I'm going to need my skills again. And, oh. This, hang on. And he walks through, you see. Grab all of China would have been easy for me. Wooden fences, they're the tricky ones. They've got all sections. I can see how kids normally get across. And it's not worked out too well for them. So, I'm not going to do what the kids do. I'm going to do what a man would do. Just fucking climb down it. I get where I am. Oh, it's one of the standing clubs over there. And there you go. Yeah, a protected one. Little peaky peaky holes. Peaky peaky. Uh, it's quite actually um, untouched. I haven't seen any of them with this bit on them. Yeah, I don't want to go in there. Fuck knows what I'll find in there. But yeah, as you can see, it's got like a concrete um structure in the middle. It's very strong looking. I think they had iron doors on them at one point as well. 
But yes, so that is that one. God. Seriously, I would not want to go in there. Fuck knows what's in there. That's the one thing about these things you'll be careful of. Is they attract bums and... Uh, well, they really do attract bums because people seem to shit in these things for some reason. But I'm by no means an expert. But the reason I know these things about them is because they've they've always been here. So, you know, as I've as said, as a kid, you look into it. And I think that's brilliant because if they leave them where they are, future generations of kids are going to come up, see it, ask about it. And it makes, like, the Second World War, what they read about in the books a lot more real, because it isn't just something that's written in a book from all this time ago, and you say to a kid 50 years ago, 60 years ago, I can't remember how long it was, 1940, um, bloody hell, yeah, it was 60 years ago, no, 60 odd, um, you tell them about something 60 years old when they're a kid, and they're like, God, that's a million years ago, but if you show them a bloody great big lump of concrete, and look, I'll let the guys who are in here pointing their guns out there, they're going to fucking love it, and they're going to look into it, and it's it's going to be very good for keeping the memory of all the people that died in the war going. So, if I ever hear that they're going to try and knock some of these things down, I will make a fucking stink, I'll tell you. Um, yeah, as you can tell, this whole vlog, I'm basically waiting for it to rain. Because it's due, it's on its way. And as you can see, it's well on its fucking way. But I have one more I want to go to. Because this one confuses me a little bit. So I'm going to go with that one, and then that's where I'll end the video. Uh, I think I'm going to have to use my teleportation skills again. Here we go. You wouldn't defend yourself from that, would you? Right, let me try this one more time. Okay, here we go. Why is there one here? And why is it so different? Remember all the other ones made out of concrete and stuff? This one is brick. Um, here it is. Oh, uh, fuck. Uh, you probably can't see shit because of the drift. But, um, yeah, it's different, this one. But it's a similar design. I mean, I guess it's open fields. It, I don't know if that was there before. Maybe it gave them a good look out in a lot of directions. I could see people crossing, coming across. I don't know. But, yeah. So, yeah, pretty much that's most of the stuff that is on Hailing. There is, I'm sure there is other bits in fields uh, I've seen before now but forgotten about. Oh, fuck. Oh, the rain's on its way. Right. Um, I'm not getting wet again. No sorry, I am going to run like a motherfucker from this rain. Right, well I hope you enjoyed that little tour. As you can see, I am now running from the rain. I should be alright. Shouldn't get too bad, hopefully. Um, fuck, but the wind is. Jesus, the wind's come with it. Ah, oh, this is what you get when you live next to the fucking sea. It was alright just now, and now look at it. Shit. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed your little lesson, and I'll catch you all next time, by which point, hopefully, I will have dried out, because I'm going to get fucking soaked at this rate. Go and live with him, basically. Um, get a work permit, and just see how it goes out there, and then if I decide to want to stay longer and sort of look at it 